I am Joy Marie Blasco and I am a lecturer at MSU IIT. I will also be handling your child and adolescent development classes. So I welcome you to our session. So let's start. Okay, so now we will start with the set one for child and adolescent development. So I will be reading to you the questions and then I will no longer read the option because you have already taken it and then it will also be projected on your screens. So without further ado, let's start. Number one, maturation means a process of, okay, so the keyword here is maturation, so from the word mature. When you say mature, uh, it means ripe. So knowing that one, mature means ripe, so maturation is the process of ripening behavior. So the answer is letter C. So just remember, maturation, ripening of behavior. So next question, number two. It refers to the progressive series of changes of an orderly and coherent type leading to the individual's maturation. Okay, so uh, we have words that are commonly confused, and then this is what we call as development, and also the other one is growth. When you say uh, it leads to maturation, that the one being referred to is development. Whereas another way that you will know that if that development is being referred is when you see the word qualitative. So uh, the qualitative changes. So that is also referring to development. Whereas when you see the word quantitative with the letter N in it, quantitative, just remember of the word, uh, the letter N, wherein it talks about number. So quantitative growth, qualitative development. And then you have another clue word, the leading to maturation that is development. So the answer is letter B. So I have here uh, a description of what I just said. Development, progressive series of changes of an orderly and coherent type leading to the individual's maturation. So number three this is connected to what I just said earlier. The term which essentially refers to quantitative changes in the individual as he progresses in chronological age is now you have the clue word here, quantitative. As what I have said earlier, quantity, the matter is the letter N. So number, it can be measured in number. It's more on the physical. So that is growth, delta. Whereas if the word here is qualitative, quality, meaning uh, you can describe it, but you cannot put a number in it, that's development. But if the clue word, the keyword is quantitative, that means it's growth. Number four. Okay, so I have here an additional slide before we proceed with the next number. Growth refers to quantitative changes in the individual as he progresses in chronological age. So can you see the difference? Growth, quantitative, and then development, qualitative. Yeah, it's here. Growth, quantitative, development, qualitative. Okay, so next number. Number four. A child using his arms and chest for catching a ball before he could use his hands and fingers demonstrates what? So before I, I discuss to you the answer, uh, I will be tackling about two trends in development, and that is cephalocodal, and then we have the proximal distal. So on the left side, I have here a picture of babies. When you say cephalocodal, from the word cephalo, it's coming from the head going down. So the development uh, starts from the head going to the toes, cephalocodal. Whereas when you say proximo distal, wherein you can also read the definitions on this on the screen, proximo distal, the development starts from the center going out. So cephalocaudal, in other terms, up, down, proximo distal, center, out. So that's what you have to remember. So the first picture, I mean the left side, this one that I'm pointing, that's an illustration of cephalocaudal. Whereas the other one, this child, uh, is an illustration of a proximal trend in development. So going back to the question, uh, number four, the child can use his arms and chest, so the center part of his body, before he can use his hands, so that's center going out, so that is proximal distance, so letter B. Okay, so number five, Zenny is wondering why at age 14 she has not menstruated yet, while her friend Remy experience menarche at age 12. Which of the following principle is applied in this situation? So the other one is already uh, 14 years old, but then uh, still has not menstruated yet. While the other one, 12 years old, but that 
person already has her menstruation. So why is it like that? Why is it that some people are advanced while some are not? So it's because we don't have the same rates in development. So that is letter A. Development rates vary. Number six. Infants first crawl, then stand, then walk. Children draw circles before squares. What development pattern is implied? So this one, in behavior, there is a pattern in the development of behavior. So let's, uh, how, let's say, for example, a child is capable of crawling before being able to stand before walking. You cannot see a child. Wala kang makikita ang bata na una siyang nag-walk and then after that one, the, the child learned to stand and after that one, pinakalas na yung crawling. Because there's always the pattern. There's always the sequence na mauna yung crawl. After that, that one, the child is capable of standing and after that one, the child is capable of walking. And this cannot be a reverse. Hindi mo pwede itong ma-shuffle na yung batang yun. Una siyang nakastand bago siya nakakroll. So it's not possible. That is why there is what we call as a pattern in development or another term for that is natural sequence of development. There's the sequence. There is that pattern. So number six is letter A. Number seven. This is the period of time from infancy to the onset of puberty. So infancy until that person Reaches, pu reaches puberty, what do you call that one? Nung tawag dyan? From infancy until siya magdadalaga. That is what we call as childhood. So, infancy, and then childhood, and then you have the puberty. So, we have here the definition of childhood. Childhood is a time for a boy or girl from birth until he or she is an adult. Another definition is period of time from infancy to the onset of puberty. And then we also have a definition from the Convention on the Rights of the Child. According to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, they have given a specific age for a person to be considered a child. And that age is if someone is below 18 years old, technically that is still a child. But we have the misconception that if that's 15 years old, that's no longer a child, that's already a uh, adolescent. But from the Convention on Human Rights, technically, if you're still 17 years old, 17 years old and 364 days, you are still considered a child because you have not reached 18 years old. So number eight, these are the movements involving smaller muscle groups, such as those in the hand and wrist. So we have, we can classify movements of muscles into two. These are what we call uh, fine motor skills and then the gross motor skills. So we will go back with the answer later. When we say fine motor skills, it involves movement of smaller muscle groups, meaning you only move small muscles, small parts of your muscles, such as your hand at wrist. So when you move that one, those are fine motor skills because it only involves small groups of muscles. Whereas the other kind of movement is the gross motor skill. So this refers to the movement of large muscles, such as young legs, young arms. So those belongs to those belong to gross motor skills. So that's the difference: fine motor skills, small muscles, such as yung sa hand and wrist, and gross motor skills, yung large muscles, such as the uh, legs and and then the arm. Going back to the question, movements involving smaller muscle groups. You have the clue word: smaller muscle groups. And another clue word you have is the hand and wrist. So the answer is letter A, fine motor skills. So let's proceed with number nine, the most teachable period of development. So in this one, among all the stages of human development, this is when you should teach stuff because this is the most teachable stage or period. And that is what we call as childhood. So the body say that, uh, there's a saying that if there's a tree and then you try to straighten the tree, if a tree is bent, and then if you try to straighten that tree and then the tree is still young, it's easy to straighten that one. But if it's already old, it's already thick, and then you try to straighten it, it will be hard. So that is why you should start teaching uh, good values to children because the most teachable period of development is the childhood. And it's not the infancy because although it's the youngest, stage among all the choices, but that infants are not capable of listening. So they're not capable of understanding your 
uh, lessons, your values that you have taught them. So the most teachable stage is the childhood. Okay, number 10. In the preschool class of Mrs. De La Cruz, she requires her pupils to use big pencils and crayons. She discourages the small, the use of small pencils and crayons. What does this imply? So why is it that uh, in preschool, the children use extra large or jumbo crayons or pencils? So have you ever wondered why they do that? Whereas if you're already in grade six, you are capable of using the smaller version of the pencils. But why is it that the children or the kindergarten's pupils use the jumbo version of pencils? It's because they cannot handle or they cannot properly hold the smaller versions, the small pencils. Because the first one that develops is the gross motor skills. The fine motor skills are not yet fully developed. So if you're asked what develops first, the fine motor skills de develops last. It's the gross motor skills that develop first. So they are capable of holding large objects, but they cannot control uh, handling smaller objects. That is why uh, during the preschool class, they have big pencils because it is easy to hold since the fine motor skills are just developing. The fine motor skills have not fully developed, it's still in the process of developing. So letter C. So I have here a summary of what I have just said. Cross motor skills develop early, earlier than fine motor skills. Preschool children have not yet fully developed their fine motor skills, so it is hard for them to control small pencils, hence they use the big ones. Number 11. When the corner of the baby's mouth is stroked or touched, the baby will turn his head and open his mouth and follow the direction of the stroke. So, uh, before I discuss the answer, I will show you an illustration of what I have just said. So, this the, you have here a picture of the baby. And then the question talks about when you stroke or you touch the, this part of the baby near the lips, the baby will follow the direction of the stroking. So if you move your finger, the stroking to the left, the tendency is that the child will also follow uh, the stroking. And that is what we call as the root reflex. So you have here root reflex because it will follow the direction or the root of the stroke. So that's why it's root reflex. So number 12. Which of the following defines plasticity? When you say plasticity, uh, you, there, this is what we call as the brain is plastic. But when you say the brain is plastic, it does not literally mean that it's plastic, plastic like copper or plastic. No. When you say the brain, the brain is plastic, meaning it's capable of changing. Your brain changes over time. So when you say plasticity, it means the brain's ability to change from experience. So uh, your plasticity declines or the changes in your brain decline as you reach adulthood. So when you're, uh, when you're young, grab your plasticity in your brain. That is why it's easier to teach stuff. It's easier to teach skill. It's easier to teach uh, competencies to children than to adults because uh, the, brain, the brain's plasticity will decri decline during adulthood. Okay, number, what shall I have here? A summary of what I just said. Uh, so throughout life, the brain continues to be plastic, but then once you reach adulthood, plasticity will decline. So uh, I have here the following questions for 14 and then so on. But then before we discuss that one, I will just talk a little bit about Eric Erikson because the following items will be focused on the theorist, not Eric Erikson. So Eric Erikson is a proponent of psychosocial development theory. So this is just a summary of his theory. So according to uh, Eric Erikson, there are stages in the psychosocial development. So in each stages, you will see the verses like trust versus mistrust, autonomy versus shame and doubt. So too much on this side, too much on the trust, too much on the autonomy, too much on the initiative, too much on this, this part, this one, will lead to maladaptation. While too much on the negative side, too much mistrust, too much shame and doubt, too much guilt, and so on and so forth, will lead to malignancy. That is why, according to Eric Erikson, there should be a balance. Because once you have the balance, you will develop the virtue, such as the hope. This is the virtue in the trust versus mistrust. Will, this is the virtue in this stage. Too much, again, too much on the left side will lead to maladaptation. Too much on the right side will lead to malignancy. 
and then in every stage, uh, there is a corresponding age, but then the ages are not fixed. Sometimes you will see three to five years old. In other references, you will see three to six years old because Eric Erikson is not very particular with the ages. But then the ages are close to each other. So uh, you can just memorize the psychosocial crisis or tasks and then the respective uh, virtues for each. So that is a summary of Eric Erikson's stages. So moving on to the next question. So number 13, when teachers understand the psychosocial development of students 6 to 12 years old, they can provide what? So let's go back first to this one, 6 to 12 years old. So as what I have said earlier, sometimes the ages are not the same because some textbooks will give you estimations, 5 to 13, other textbooks will give you 6 to 12. So there are discrepancies in the estimation, but uh, you have to remember to look for the closest age. So in the question, 6 to 12 years old, the closest in the 6 to 12 years old is the 5 to 13 years. And what is the psychosocial crisis in that? So that is industry versus inferiority. So knowing that one, so that's why, I, as what I have said, it's very important to memorize this one, the respective ages, the respected, uh, the respective, I mean, respective ages, respective psychosocial tasks, and respective virtues. So you know that 6 to 12, industry versus inferiority. So now look for questions, in options in the question that talk about industry versus inferiority. So play activities to foster social development. Uh, it does not talk about industry versus inferiority very far from what you're looking for. Uh, activities that encourage emotional support, very far from what you're looking for. It does not tackle about industry versus inferiority. Let us skip letter C first. Look at letter D. Activities that foster trust. This talks more about the, look at this one, trust versus mistrust. So infant to 18 months, so that's not what you're looking for. You're, what you're looking for is the one that tackled about uh, industry versus inferiority. And the only question, I mean, the only option among the among this is letter C, projects that encourage industriousness. So for 6 to 12 years old, you should focus on industriousness. So much for that. Number 14. Let's go to number 14. In which order do the three important goals during childhood be attained according to Erickson? So this question can easily be remembered or easily be answered if you just memorized, if you just remember the stages. So what are the order? What is the order of the stages? So look at the order. Trust, autonomy, industry, in initiative, industry, identity, intimacy, generativity, and integrity. So it starts with the AI, and then followed by a lot of I's. So it starts with ta e, diba? trust, autonomy, initiative. So that that is very easy to remember. The first three stages are ta e, trust, autonomy, and initiative. So the answer is letter D. So number fifteen. John is an average young man who seems to be experimenting with different roles. At home, he is obedient and quiet, but with his friends, he is relaxed and easily suggests trying out new things. According to Erickson, what stage of development is John experiencing? So this talks about the stage in development wherein there is a conflict in identity because John at home is obedient, but that John at home, I mean John with his friends, is very uh, relax and then uh, he loves trying out new things. So what is this stage? So does it talk about intimacy or does it talk about identity? So it talks about identity. So identity, but then do you have two identity options here? That is why uh, we be very careful if the partner of that crisis, the psychosocial crisis is correct. Because you might be answering B because you see identity, but it's not identity versus isolation. It's identity versus role confusion. That is why it's very important that you memorize the stages. So it's identity versus role confusion and not identity versus isolation. This is very wrong. So number 15 talks about uh, having identity or having role confusion. So it's in here, identity versus confusion or identity versus role confusion. That's around 13 to 21 years old. But then it can have different estimations depending on the textbook that you are using. Okay, number 16. 
A parent who understands the psychosocial development of preschoolers will help them develop what? Your keyword here is preschoolers. But the thing is, how old are preschoolers? What is the age of preschoolers? If you got that wrong, then your answer will be wrong. Preschool is approximately what age range? So preschoolers are approximately between 3 to 5 years old or 3 to 6 in some textbooks. And going back to this, 3 to 5 or 3 to 6, the psychosocial crisis is initiative versus guilt. So this 3 to 5 or 3 to 6 years old, that's the preschool age. Always remember that one. So initiative versus guilt. So which of you here, which of the choices here talks about initiative? That is letter B, initiative. Because trust is for uh, infant to 18 months. That's not uh, preschoolers. Uh, trust and mistrust, you will not, should not develop mistrust. It's a negative thing. And then the industry versus inferiority. Industry is around 5 to 13 or 6 to 13 years old. That is school age. This one, this 5 to 13 or 6 to 12. This is school age. School age. But then what you're looking for is the preschool age. So that's why this is the answer initiative. So let's proceed to, before we proceed with number 17, uh, let me talk to you about this theorist, and then his name is pronounced as John Piaget. Not Jean Piaget, not Jean Piaget, but John, even though it's spelled as Jean, but then it's pronounced as John Piaget. So the following items will be all about John Piaget. So number 17, the idea that children's cognitive development follows a well-defined sequence, sequences or stages whereby they acquire structure that enables them to deal with the world is the theory of what or whom. So according to John Piaget, he believes that there is a particular stage for each development. And then in each stage, the child is capable of doing this and not capable of doing that. So for further information, the four stages that John Piaget talks about is the uh, sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage, and the formal operational stage. So the sensory motor stage is zero to two years old. The pre-conventional, I mean the pre-operational stage is two to seven years old. The uh, operational stage or the concrete operational stage that is seven to two to seven, seven to eleven years old. Eleven, uh, and then the formal operational stage is 11 years old and above. Okay, so number 17. The idea that children's cognitive development follows a well-defined sequences or stages whereby they acquire structure that enables them to deal with the world is the theory of... Okay, so there's that theorist and his name is John Piaget wherein he talks about uh, the stages of each development. But according to him, these stages are very fixed because there are things that a child cannot do, and then there are things that a child is expected to do inside the stages. So the four stages, according to John Piaget, are sensory motor stage, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage, and the formal operational stage. Okay, so let's proceed with number 18. The cognitive process, which refers to the realization that even if things change in physical appearance, Attributes are constant. So uh, this is also under the theory of John Piaget, because according to him, in the pre-operational stage, uh, I will show you a picture of that one. Uh, in the pre-operational stage, the children will be tricked. For example, if you have a glass of water, and then the other one is shallow, and then the other one is thicker than the other, and then they have the same amount of water, but then of course but the the shallower container, the taller one, will look like it has content, even though it has more content, even though they have the same volume. The child in the pre-operational stage or the child which has centration will think that the other one is taller, the other one has more water, where in fact it is just the same. But when the child can no longer be tricked, when the child is already in the concrete operational stage here, the concrete operational stage, if the child already has conservation, which is under concrete operational stage, the child will not be tricked. The child will just say, oh, it's just the same, just like this one. 
the same amount of water even if you transfer it in a smaller, narrower container which wherein it looks na medyo mas marami yung water, if the child has conservation, the child will say that it is the same. The attributes are constant even though there are changes in the appearance. So, 18 is conservation. The opposite of conservation is centration. So, I have here the definition of conservation. The understanding that something stays the same in quantity even though its appearance changes. Okay, number 19. To make sense of our world, we organize our experiences. We also change our thinking to include new and additional information. The process of changing our thinking as a result of new ideas is termed by Piaget as what? Okay, so you have here two important keywords that you have to remember. You have assimilation and then you have also the accommodation. So before I discuss that this one, uh, I will show you this slide. Assimilation and accommodation. When you say assimilation, you use your existing schema or you use your existing knowledge to deal with a new object or situation. Whereas when you say accommodation, there is changing going on because you realize that your previous knowledge is not uh, applicable anymore. So there is changing going on. So for practical application of that one so that you can easily remember. For example, you have the notion that uh, the, the, some children, some students have the notion that if ever they see an animal that has four legs, that is a dog. The, the, there are students that, or children that when they see four-legged animals, a ladder's a dog. So even if they see a cat, they call it a ladder's a dog because they think that if, it's, if it has four legs, that is a dog. Same as when they see a horse, but then it's actually uh, what they think of it is that it's a carabao because it fits the description of the carabao. So they call the horse a carabao. That is assimilation. They use their old knowledge to deal with a new situation like this one. The child thinks that if it's a four-legged animal, that is a dog. So the child saw a cat. So he said, wow, that's a cute fluffy dog. That is assimilation stage. But if the child already realized na there is something wrong or there is uh, something that I must must change in my previous knowledge because not all four-legged animals are dogs. Some are cats, some are carabaos, and so on and so forth. That is what we call accommodation. So when you say accommodation, there is changing going on. There's changing, modification, or altering of your previous knowledge. Very easy to remember. Accommodation has the letter C, change. So another example, some children... Whenever they see uh, anything that flies, like for example, when they see an airplane or when they see a kite, some children will call it, hello, there's a bird. Look, there's a bird in the sky because they think that everything that flies is a bird. That is assimilation. But when they realize that some objects that fly are kites, some are birds, some are airplanes, that is what we call accommodation stage. So going back to the question number 19, uh, we change our thinking to include new ideas and additional information. There is changing going on. So, the back changing, letter C. There's the letter C. Accommodation. So, the answer is letter C. Okay, number 20. Two sticks are aligned in front of the child. The child agrees that they are the same length. The teacher moves the stick to the right and then asks the child if they are equal in length. The child answers no. The one on top is longer. What skills does the child lack? So this can be a tricky question. That is why we'll break it down. So you have there two sticks in front of the child. And then the, the, the teacher asks, are they the same length? And then the child, uh, replied, the child replied, yes, they are of the same length. And after that one, the teacher moves the other stick to the right and then asks the child again, do they have the same length? So the child said this time, no, the one on top is longer. So what does the child have? The child has centration. But because he was tricked by that one. But going back to the question, the one that is being asked is not what the child has, but what the child lacks. So the child lacks conservation or the ability to conserve because he has centration. So be careful of words like lack or has because sometimes it can be very tricky because you're, you're assuming that ah the child did this or that concentration, but actually when you finish the question, it's talking, it's talking about what the child lacks. 
Okay, number 21. A child aged or age one year old realizes that things continue to exist even if it is no longer present to the senses. According to PJ, the child has achieved what? Okay, so the child, according to PJ, whenever you hide a toy from the child and then the child will look for it because, you know, I have a toy, I really have that toy, so that child already has object permanence. So this one, if the child has not or did not develop object permanence yet, even if you hide the toy of the child, the, the child will not care. He will not even remember that he has a toy. But if a child already has object permanence and then you try to hide the toy, the child will look for it. So that will occur from birth to two years old, somewhere around this. It's expected that between the stage, the child will develop the object permanence. Okay, number 22. Caroline thinks that all people who speak French live in France. All people who speak English live in the United States. So when an English-speaking person tells her that they live in Canada, she concludes that Canada must be in the U.S. Caroline is what? So let's break down the question. She believes now that uh, all people, if they speak French, they live in France. If they speak English, they live in the U.S. So there's an English person nga, uh, that speaks English but living in Canada. So she assumes that as maybe Canada is in the U.S. So... Let's go back to my discussion earlier. Did she use her previous knowledge or did she change or modify something? So, diba, you see, there is no changing going on. She's just accepting information based from what she already knew. So, that is assimilating letter A. So, this one, this is a review of what I had just discussed to you. Assimilating is when you use an existing schema or you just accept the information based from what you already know. Whereas, accommodation is when there is changing, modification, or altering going on. Number 23. Equilibration, as PLJ uses the term, is the search for what? Okay, so going back to assimilation and accommodation, it's not good that you always assimilate because you just accept information. And then what you may be accepting is not correct. But it is also not right if you keep on accommodating. Because if you keep on changing, what knowledge will be left? If you just keep on changing, changing, altering, modifying, that is why there should be balance between assimilation and accommodation. And that is what we call as equilibration. Equilibration from the root word equilibrium or balance. So knowing that one, equilibration is the balance between your old knowledge and then your new knowledge or the balance between New evidence and existing understanding. Okay, number 24. A preschool child said that tree pushed the leaf off and it fell down. This shows that the preschooler thought that objects have lifelike qualities and are capable of action. This is called what? So when if you observe preschool children, they when they play kind of balay balay or when they when they do that one, they also feed their toys or uh, they also comb the hair of their toys. They talk to their toys or they they seem to pretend or they seem to think that uh, their toys and other non-living objects are humans. That is what we call as animism. So don't be tricked with letter B. Animation is not an answer, but it is animism. So this is an example of a picture of animism. You believe that inanimate objects such as toys and teddy bears and other stuff have human feelings and intentions. That is why when they play, they feed also their dolls. They also give a portion to their teddy bears because that is normal. Because according to John Piaget, that is expected in pre-operational stage. That is expected in two to seven years old. So that is what we call as animism. 